the bonus episode, Frequently Asked Questions. I only have 10 questions. One of them's going to take a little longer than the others. And um, the first one is, what is the Pantone color of the year and why does it matter? I really thought everybody knew what it was, but I've found that through my assistants and things like that and just asking other people, if they're not sort of in this industry where you deal with color a lot, they had no idea what I was even talking about. But to give just a little bit of history on that, it comes from the Pantone Color Institute, which was created in 1963. That's the year I was born, so I, I know that that's almost 59 years ago. And it's a color matching system. And every color spectrum of the rainbow that you can totally imagine is there. And every color and every tint of that color, and they all have a number. And... Those numbers are used in by paint companies, textile companies to make fabrics, to make plastics, in fashion, fashion marketing, and for brands, and makeup, and icing, and jewelry, and logos, and where if you're, it's important to know the numbers for your logo if you develop one so that it's always the same across everything that you do, online, or print, or t-shirts, or newspapers or website whatever you do you would need to go to you know have these numbers to go to the people who create those designs for you so that it'll always be the same all the way through in 2000 they started the color of the year and that's a uh, sort of a trend setting color and a really cool thing they did and those uh colors go out for like social media templates for people to know that's what color makeup is going to be popular eyeshadow that's what color clothing that's what colors are going to be used in decor items cars get painted based on these colors and you a lot of companies like you have your logo we just talked about designing your logo and having the exact numbers so that it's always the same all the way across some companies actually have the design say the nike check which is the same but everything else that would go along with it they could change the color of the background or that they use every year to be trend setting i used to work for a radio station uh 92 rock and we changed our logo by adding a little santa claus emblem or a little um alligator or whatever to the center of our bumper stickers you know probably three or four times a year and it was still recognizable as our logo but it would have something seasonal added in so this isn't exactly seasonal but it's annual and it's where you can tweak things a little bit and to stay you know relevant i guess and it's like renewing your look and keeping you up to date the PMS, that, uh, that's your color finder. That's called the Pantone Matching System. And that's your uh, red, green, blue, your hex codes. Those are the numbers that they use uh, in Photoshop and things like that to make sure that it's always the same. So these people at the Pantone Color Institute study color, study trends. This, week, this year's color is periwinkle, which is, you know, this purpley blue kind of color and each year they'll come out with this they'll share it and then you can know to sort of add that in to keep you you know up to date and renew your look so i hope that's enough info to help a second question is when starting a furniture business how do you know what is a trending especially in your area well my best response to that is to go to uh, local boutiques and not exactly the, you know, not Walmart, not, not, not Walmart. They're going to be two or three years behind, but go to the small boutique stores and you, and, and the furniture stores, they're going to be about a season ahead of what we're understanding and using right now to where you go in there and you're like, Oh, I didn't think of that. That's so cute. Or that's, I have to have it. Those things are going to be there to tell you what's trending in your area. People are going to be gobbling that new stuff up. And those areas, if it looks like they're wanting things bright and colorful, paint some stuff bright and colorful. 
if it looks like it's subdued or it looks like, you know, they're wanting cut up things, then they're wanting more distressed things. So it all sort of ties and correlates in together. But I would go into boutiques and furniture stores in my area. Three, is furniture flipping profitable? For some people it is, for some people it isn't, and it all depends on if you're working your business like a business. If you're thinking that you can go buy a piece of furniture on the marketplace for $25, paint it, and put it back on the marketplace for $50, and that you've doubled your money, no, your business is not going to be profitable, and it's, it's, you're, you're not going to be able to keep up with that long, because if, if you're doing it for a hobby, that's cool. But if you're doing it for a business, you have to account for everything you do plus your time in order for it to be profitable. So absolutely, yes. I work it as a business. This has been my business for a long time, but I also did it as a hobby for many years before that. But if, if you want it to be profitable, you got to work it like a business, but it absolutely can be. Number four. How do you know what furniture to flip? Well, start with what you love. It, if you look on Marketplace, which is the best procurement place these days for where, you know, everybody finds everything or at least gets ideas or starts looking. I mean, maybe, you know, you go to antique stores first or, or, or vendor malls, however you do it. But uh, you start with what you love. If you if you look at a piece of furniture and you say, man, that is gorgeous. I wish it was blue to match my living room. Then that's what you do. And you, you buy that piece of furniture if it's, if it's priced where you can still make a profit and add everything to it that you need to to make the profit. Um, then that's what you would do. You, you really need to love it. If you see a piece that... Um, Somebody that you admire does something that, you know, Quita Allen from All Shabbed Out did or, or Dion Woods from the Turquoise Iris or any other uh, furniture flipper that you really particularly love their work. You can look for a piece similar to the piece that they did and generally they're doing these videos to where you know exactly what products they used and what colors that uh, you used and you can mimic that, or if you loved the piece but you wanted different colors, just make sure if, you, if you're doing it exactly like they did it to, um, and you're going to sell it or whatever, or put it on your page, to um, tag them in it, like at the Turquoise Iris, or at All Shabbed Out, or at Art by Terry Stovall, uh, make sure that you give them credit for having the original idea. But... Um, that's you can look at what the famous people are flipping or you can look at what's the history of what has sold in marketplace kind of like you used to do on uh, eBay and find out what's selling look at Jamie Ray vintage if that's whose pieces that you really uh, love in your heart then you can mimic those yours aren't going to be exactly like theirs anyway but Find someone whose work you love and look at the pieces that they choose and you can choose accordingly. Number five, what is the most popular color for painted furniture? That probably depends on where you're at, but industry-wide, it is white for number one, black for number two, gray for number three, and blue for number four. And that, I'm going to include your teals in with the blues. And all of the other colors take a little longer to sell, and they're not as popular. So if you wanted to, if your business was flipping furniture and you wanted to flip them fast, if you wanted to sell two pieces a week and knock them out the, you know, as fast as you can, paint them white, paint them black, paint them gray, or paint them blue, and they're going to sell fast. Number six, how do you coordinate paint colors on furniture? Well, the first thing you can do is, is look on Pinterest. You can look at something to be your inspiration. If your inspiration could be this tablecloth, because um, these are not colors that you would ordinarily think would go good together, but they actually, if you're doing a boho piece, they do. Um, I painted... 
an entire bedroom and all of the furniture in there based on the colors in a comforter. So you can look on Pinterest, look at your favorite clothing. When you're looking on Pinterest, you don't just have to look up painted furniture, although you can find all kinds of beautiful things if you do, but you can also look up old doors. I love that. If you're wanting to do something boho or something distressed and find some of the European doors, those are some gorgeous, gorgeous uh, colors. And pottery, as it's aging, gives some beautiful colors. But look at the outfits, the people who create the outfits, the tops and the bottoms, the clothing together, um, lampshades, house, other household goods, paintings, canvas paintings for the wall. And look at something, and if you have a new shawl and you really love the, the colors that are in it, use that as your inspiration. You don't have to paint that same design on your furniture, but those same colors you know will go to good together. Um, curtains is another good one. Wayfair has a, a lot of different styles of curtains, and that's where you can look and find uh, where different colors that coordinate well. If they coordinate well on fabrics, they're gonna coordinate well on furniture. Number seven, how long does it take to flip a piece? That is absolutely up in the air. It's up to you and how fast you work and whether you can work straight through, but you're always gonna have things like uh, cleaning time, drying time, any repairs that have to be made, um, repairs, there's no way to say, you know, every piece of furniture can be done in four hours if you work straight through because sometimes they need repairs. And if you use Bondo or mud or whatever you use to repair it, that has to dry. You have to sand that off uh, before you start the process. But when the actual process of painting the furniture starts, it still depends. It depends on if you're covering a dark color with a light color. But if all things were good, if you had a light colored piece of furniture, it was in great condition, it was solid wood, not laminate, and there were no worries, all you needed to do was paint it, you absolutely could be done in four hours. The recent uh, DIY boot camp, video boot camp, uh, put on by Debbie Beard of uh, Debbie's Design Diary, all of the challenge pieces that were done there, I think there were 23 of us all together. I did it online. Several went to um, California to do it. Anyway, you had four hours to do your piece. And so all of these beautiful pieces were done in four hours. Some were distressed. Some were layered. Some were had transfers. Mine had dry brushing over it and more than one color of paint. But things that you have to consider is how long it takes your paint to dry, um, how long it takes your top coat to dry, and you're gonna have to put a couple of coats of paint just about always. So if your paint takes 30, if it takes you an hour to paint it and your paint takes 30 minutes to dry, you've got another coat of paint to put on there, another 30 minutes to dry, and then your top coat, you're gonna be cutting it real tight at four hours. So a weekend is what I would like to say. If it doesn't need any um, repairs or modifications, if you're not adding wood you bend or, or you know other embellishments like that, you can clean the piece, put a coat of paint on it, go do something else. Come back in about an hour, put the second coat of paint, go do something else, come back, put that top coat on it, give it a couple of hours to dry and it can be for sale right then. However, these paints dry um, from the outside in. So just because it's dry to the touch on top doesn't mean it's dry all the way through. Kind of like when you go and get your nails done and, and you've cured them, you think you're doing great, everything's good, and then you touch your thumbnail that you touched it and it was dry, but then you got an indentation in it. It's the same thing. You can get indentations or cause some of your paint not to adhere if you rush any of the process. So your dry to the touch time is gonna be a couple of hours, but your cure time to where you can bring it here, sit something on it, scoot it around, put it for sale in a vendor's market, send it off to be shipped to somebody else's house, that's generally three to four weeks. I like to say 30 days. So you can get your paint on there in a weekend easily. 
in a day if you need to. So there's, there's not a real answer for that. How do I get started with shipping? That's question number eight. I just completed a video this morning. I'll have it on YouTube later, and we'll share it on, on Facebook as well. And I did a screen share of me going on to U-Ship, which is who I use for shipping furniture. Um, and you can go back also to our shipping episode, and I listed the names and phone numbers of a couple of drivers that I use outside of U-Ship. However, on the video that I just did on, on the shipping, it the prices are absolutely crazy right now because the fuel prices are so high on the truck drivers that if they're still doing it at all, they're having you have to pay for the fuel that they're using. So what normally you ship um, quoted that it would normally be shipped for uh, $247, I believe it was. My quote was $800 today. So that's why... Um, when you list it, you have to say after you pay for it or before you pay for it. If you just want me to look, I'll be happy to do that. And it's not instantaneous, but um, you put in your listing, you know, contact me for shipping. You have to know the address that it's going to, whether it's commercial or residential, whether they have a delivery dock or whatever, um, which most of the time it's going to go to somebody's house. So it won't have that. Um then you have to put it in you ship or contact somebody for a quote. I use, and I included this in the, in the last episode on, on shipping, but I include a disclaimer on all of my listings on my website, on Facebook and on Etsy and um, on marketplace that says, you know, once you buy it, it's yours, but we also have to get it to you and you would need to pay that expense. And we, there's no way of knowing what it is from day to day until we know what driver is going from my area to your area, when they're going, it may be a month out, and how much they will charge, which has more than tripled just in the last couple of weeks. But how you get started with shipping is you can go on to U-Ship, just look for that video, and it's just called How Do You, how do you Ship Furniture Through U-Ship, and it's only eight minutes long, and it's just a screen share where I show you exactly um, how I do that. But you, when you list it on a place like Etsy, where people can see it nationwide, then you, then you get those uh, contacts and you about shipping, and you'll need to use that information that will be in the other video. There's not much more I can go into detail on this one, but that's how you get started. You list it, you tell them you got to contact me with your address, and then you go and get a quote. Then you present the quote back to the buyer and say, you know, it's going to be, that particular quote this morning was $800. Then there's a 10% fee that goes to you ship, so that made it $880. Then there's going to be insurance on top of that. So the quote to the customer for shipping, this same fish dresser that I just went over with you earlier is going to be $1,000. So since this piece is going to sell for $899, if it were to be shipped, from here to Parkersburg, West Virginia, which is the example place that I used in my U-Ship quote, it would be $1,899 for that piece of furniture, which is still a very good deal for a custom-made piece of furniture. So even if we may think, oh my goodness, I couldn't pay $1,800 for a dresser, there are people in this country who pay 10 times that for a dresser every day of the week. So don't sell yourself short. And, and where we may balk at $800 shipping, they're going to not balk at $1,800 for the piece at all. So don't prejudge it and just do it. Just just put it there and, and they're not going to take your birthday away if it's, if it's messy and takes you a minute to, to get it figured out. Okay, question number nine. Is it really no prep with chalk paint? We went over this, I think, in episode three, maybe, or four. Yes and no. Um, if you have a wood piece that's real wood and it's clean and it has no damage to it and no kind of top coat on it that makes it slick or anything like that, absolutely, you don't have to do a dang thing. You can take your chalky-based paint, your chalk mineral paint, your clay-based paint, paint that sucker, just get it out of the back of your truck, bring it in the house, paint it, and be done with it. Absolutely, that you can do that. However... 
Most of the time, the furniture is not real wood anymore. Most of the time, it has a thick coating of varnish of some sort, polyurethane or something on it, that's going to need to be scuff sanded, or you're going to need to use an adhesion primer or something. And you almost always, when you get a piece and you don't know where it has been, you're always going to want to clean it. And when you clean with the White Lightning, which is a Dixie Belle product, it's cheap, like six bucks or something like that for a bunch of uses. Um, that also deglazes it a little bit. So you can get some adhesion just with that. But in, you don't have to sand it all off and make it all rough. You can just do a scuff sand. Just scuff it up just a tad here and there with a... a 150 grit sandpaper and that's going to give it enough tooth to go with you don't have to do anything perfect or anything like that so it's a whole lot less prep than you would have to do with everything else and in certain circumstances you don't have to have any prep but if it's slick if it's laminate if it's a veneer with a slick you know a slick top coat on it yep you you do even with these paints you do still need to scuff it up or use a primer okay Question 10. What happens if I don't seal a piece I painted? Um, it depends on what paint you used. If you use the clay-based paint that doesn't have any type of binder in it, like the DIY paint, then anytime it gets wet, sometimes even after it's fully cured, but mostly until it's fully cured, give it that 30 days, then the it's, the paint is going to be reactivated, turn wet again, and, and you can wipe the, all the paint back off. After it has uh, cured with that particular paint a few months, maybe baked in the sun if you're doing a picnic table or something like that, the rain's not going to hurt it. It's going to turn into like a, a, a hard clay stucco-like finish. But I would go ahead and always use Big Top or something on it to give it that seal, to seal those pores. With a paint like uh, Dixie Belle that has an acrylic uh, binder built in, it doesn't have to have a primer, I mean a top coat. You don't have to seal it. Um, I have a gate that I painted outside that has not been sealed, and I did it a year ago or almost a year ago, and it's still just like it was, so that's great. Would have been better with a, with a sealer. Um, to keep the color from fading, but it hasn't faded in a whole year. With something like the Silk All-in-One paint, it already has a top coat built in, so you don't have to seal it at all. So, and and I really wouldn't recommend it, you, you know, wasting your money on adding a sealer. That's only just if you want to. So, that's it. And this is the final episode of Furniture Painting 101. I hope you enjoyed this uh, bonus episode. If you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. I would love to know if you flip furniture, how long you've been flipping furniture, and if you're enjoying it, if it's your business or your side hustle or a hobby, let me know um, how you flip furniture. I want to know, know about you too. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.